Hi guys, this is a tutorial on lighting for VFX and what the aim of this video is to get a result like this. So we've got, uh, this is a raw CG render so it doesn't look amazing, it's not being comped in or anything, there are no shadows yet. But we have the lighting dis uh, not too dissimilar to the plate. Uh, so timestamps will be below because I don't know how long this video will be. And if you want to download the scene file which contains this asset, and the textures there will be a link down below if you're a patreon you will get access to the scene download and also if you sign up to the patreon any of the tiers then you get put into a discord group of which i am a member of so if you want to ask questions like i will get back to them as soon as i can um, downloading uh, the scene also gives you this footage this is just a very short clip of this guy walking it's from an old short film um, but yeah, this asset is a field cannon, but for this, what we're going to do is I'm just going to walk you through how I did this light setup. This is similar to how I've done lighting for my other video, like lighting for VFX and also that, um, that video called, uh, the Wolverine behind the scenes. Uh, I forgot the name. There was a short film called Claws or something that I worked on. And so I'm just going to show you exactly what I do. I'm just dividing here. So below there is, um, I know that that's all the old lighting. So I'm going to start from scratch. Um, but firstly, what I, sh I should show you what I did. So I've got a, um, I've got a re what I call a reflection plane. So if I load up the folder and in assets there's a re uh, there will be a readme file within this that i will um to tell you where items are if you decide to download it anyway i made this reflection plate so as you can see it's the footage it's the end frame because the guy walks up to this other man and what i've done in photoshop was i just extended it further so the plate was 1920 by 1080 so i I remember so I made it like two, oh, 2535 by 730. So this is being used as an IBL, although it's not. So this is a bit of like a cowboy trick, but it's just because I want this in the environment, basically. So we're going to do two similar things. So let's start. Okay, just to confirm, let's let's hit render first, just so we can see that nothing, there's nothing going on in the scene. Okay, so as as expected, Maya just screwed up and kept crashing, like just because I was trying to hide some lights. So what I've done is deleted the lights. This is my render, so you can see how beautiful that is. So we have a black render, clean scene. Um, also, when you go to Arnold Render View, which is Arnold then Render. You can press this cog on the side here and you can change this to background image and put in your plate. Um, so at the moment, that's why I've got a double effect because I've got a plate coming through my camera as well. You can also remove the number and put hash, 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 hash. And as you scroll through the sequence, it should update the background image. At the moment, I'm gonna turn this off because I've already got um, my camera shooting i mean projecting through um so the camera if you go to the environment tab um, the render cam shape and then environment press create and then it'll give you this then name it something like plate underscore image find you find the footage so i'm using the jpegs which will be in the assets folder um, so you can use that and then change the depth as well that pushes it back as well because this is I've tried to go for real world scale so this Canon I searched it up um, so it should be approximately the right scale um, just get realistic lighting results anyway moving forward let's create a light so let's start with the IBL uh, sky dome I could rename this I'm gonna call it IBL because normally I would call it HDR but this is not an HDR so I would be lying and the camera bit, I'm going to leave that on for the moment, so it's going to appear when we render. Although that can be kind of annoying. Um, so in the color bit, let's load in the reflection plane. So if you have set your project, you know, go to file, 
I can't click it now, file and then set project, but, and then you find this folder called CG integration project, then it should load, it should uh, take you to the correct areas like source images, for example. Anyway, there's a reflection plane you can see there and it's created TX anyway, so I might as well pick the TX because Arnold by default has a TX conversion anyway. Uh, TX is a MIP map image file and you can see as I click the Arnold tab, it says auto generate. Right, so what we could see is, let's look through the camera, I need to rotate this basically. Because we know where the guys are. I'm just gonna check if my camera's locked because I'm paranoid that I'm gonna move this angle. So I'm just gonna lock this stuff. Let's go back to perspective. So what I want to do is just rotate this loosely around so because you can see our footage in the background so that's our sequence this sh camera shot is locked off so it's not moving anywhere so I've not tracked this either so the focal length is probably wrong that's something else to keep in mind but this is purely a lighting exercise just quickly trying to show you how I light for VFX in fact I'm lighting on a TV show at the moment and I'm doing it exactly like this okay so we've got the IBL We've got the image it's approximately in the right position that's great next bit we want to go to AAV light group this is very cool um, so let's just call this IBL and uh, camera I'm just going to turn it off because it's annoying uh, let's go to render settings let's turn on some AOVs that could be useful actually I've already turned some on but anyway go to the AOV tab um, you might as well add the ones in I've got um, to be fair, the cryptos, because I'm not going to do any comping, like it's, there's no point really. And all these objects, a lot of them are combined, so these two are pretty much the same. It's a few salbido, I don't need that. What I'm looking for is the direct. If I click direct and then click all light groups, and you see there we've got IBL because I just named this dome light um, in the AOV light group, I named it IBL. So let's go back there. All light group. As we add lights um, and give them names, more will appear down here. So what we could do is on the direct, we can do all light groups, or normally I do specular direct as well. Actually, that's already turned on. Indirect, I uh, don't care about so much. Because the thing is, like, if you create too many separation of passes, you do have to combine them back, so that's something else to keep in mind. Um, okay, let's do a test render. So I'll look through the render cam. Go Arnold render. Cool. Let's see if I can just snap this okay so what we've got straight away is pretty damn good so as you can see if I change the intensity to zero nothing happens so yeah that's great um, so with IBLs or HDRs normally because they're expensive to render and they soften shadows a lot you want to keep them a bit darker so although exposure of zero looks pretty good for the moment I'm just gonna put that to minus one and then see if I can pick it up with other lights and other tricks really uh, just because you know you will if you primarily rely on like, IBLs HDRs you will get soft shadows and the render times will be really high because there's a lot of color introduced as well so I've just made made a ground plane and I'm going to change just bring down the poly count and I'm going to call this um, ground ground underscore projection um, underscore geo and with that selected I'm going to go to Arnold lights mesh light and now I'm going to open up my hypershade because this bit's a little bit confusing if you've never done it before. So what we're going to do is go to the lights tab and then 
whereas here we go like so if I hover over that it says light ground projection geoshim so I'm gonna press in and outputs so it's, oh it's showing the other light so this is just the one we want um, so now what we want to do is create I hit tab press AI camera projection what we want to do is project the footage from the camera onto this ground plane so it's in the right spot and then emit the colors back onto the object so with this AI camera projection node do link camera do render unsure cam shape and then projection color we will load in the footage so I think it's in I should have put it in source images but I put it in assets for some reason uh, I'm just gonna go to JPEGs that's fine for me then <clears throat> you notice in the hypershade compared to the attribute editor there's a few things missing so in the attribute editor click use image sequence and then I'm just going to call this um, projection oh, whoops projection plate underscore image so IMG just image I like to abbreviate things um, okay so the camera projection node <coughs> what we do with that finally middle mouse drag into the color slot of the light and in inside this mesh light go to the AOV light group and let's call it something like grounds underscore LGT for light and let's minimize that for the moment hit render see what happens Let's start to crank this up. 20, 30. Oops, whoa. Oh. Okay, it's it's jumping because it's doing the scene it's doing scene updates. Wow. Okay. 22. Says so before, it's after. You can turn off scene updates again before and after you can see so we're now introducing some of the green from underneath that's pretty cool so let's snapshot that one okay so that's the second light and I might have to recreate those AOVs because Arnold is not recreate is not um, creating the AOVs uh, so I turned on all light groups so it should be doing that but this copy is quite glitchy, to be fair, of Maya. So anyway, let's move on to the next one for the moment. But what it should be doing is separating uh, the lights. Lights out. Oh wait. Okay, now it's done it. Cool. So uh, direct um, specular direct. It's just so we can see the specular, the primary rays of the ground. It's still not picking up the IBL one for some reason. Not fully sure at the moment why that is, but never mind. Let's move forward. Um, okay, so now what I want to do is I want to introduce some background, some extra background reflection. So, you know, I don't always do this. Um, it just depends on the shot. I just noticed there was a running shot in a TV show that I was working on recently, and I introduced a curved uh, polygon behind and projected onto it, and it enhanced the look quite a lot. I also did something similar in my tutorial called my quick one, which was like um, lighting cars in CG, something like that. But it's just a quick example because I generally end up doing the same sort of things for lighting. Oh, uh, my keyboard is not even working. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, that's weird. I can't.
Okay, so I've got the plane behind there. It's pretty much 90, but my keyboard is not working. I think everything's going pretty rubbish for this tutorial. Anyway, I hope it's of help. Um, so what I'm going to do, hold down space bar with a plane selected. I divided the polygon planes so on the right hand side, 50 by 50. Hold down space bar, go to deform, nonlinear, click on bend. So it creates this bend here. And what we're going to do is rotate this bend handle sideways a bit. Oh my god, why is my keyboard not working? This is a joke. This is mental. Okay, just going to have to like, just might actually need to buy a new keyboard. That's ridiculous. Okay, so it's not that direction. So I'm going to rotate it forward. We just want it to curve round the asset, basically be behind the camera. There we go. Cool. Now let's call this card card underscore projection. I keep turning caps lock on because I've been I'm using Houdini a lot at the moment, and uh, I swear everything is named in caps lock when you have out no output nodes and stuff. Okay, right, with that selected, what we could do is we could also, um, oh, keep in mind, because you've got the bend handle on it, um, if you hold down space bar, go edit, delete by type history, if you want to keep the bend handle, you need to do non-deformer history. So yeah, just be careful, be aware of that. With the light, with that selected, now let's go to the Arnold tab and do lights, do mesh light, and now let's repeat the same thing. So in the attribute editor with this new one, I'm gonna change AOV light group to call card underscore projection underscore LGT. And let's load up the hyper shade. So I have this projection card light here, and what I'm gonna do is just exactly the same thing. So it's going to be projecting the same thing, but it's a separate. It's now a separate entity, so we can control the image being given off by this back card separately. But it's just using the same setup. In fact, we could have used the same footage from here. This. Oh wait, not this. Um, the footage that was imported into this camera. We could have actually just found that if I had gone to. Uh, textures it would have been somewhere here like plate underscore image but I re-imported it so you can minimize the amount of stuff in your scene by doing that okay so that's plugged in that's all fine so we've already set it up once we don't need to do any more and let's hit render I'm gonna go render update full scene oh before and after now let's turn up the exposure on that. Oops, going crazy. 23, 24. So now you can see we're getting a bit more color introduced at the back. Okay, so there's the beginning. So, well, that was IBL, and now with the introduction of these, so now it's inheriting a lot more color into the scene. And I think what I would do is introduce another one, another light. So at the moment, we've got two projection lights and an IBL. Okay, so the next light I would introduce is gonna be basically a key light. So I'm gonna hold down space bar, go to Arnold, lights area lights and this is a trick that i did in one of my other videos i love using constraints because i you know it just feels like there's more controllability in it so i'm going to scale up so i hit r to go to scale scale it up and just drag the light out depending on which way this line is because that's the direction so we're just putting it to the left in one axis the reason for that is i'm then going to hold down space go to create Create a locator. I'm going to rename this light um, key, 
key underscore light LGT and then this will be called key underscore light underscore const for constraint. Now I forget which order this is. I think it's the light, uh, no, maybe it's the null and then the light. But so you select them in that order specifically. And then we hold down spacebar, we go to uh, constrain and then aim. But I'm going to click on this box. Make sure maintain offset is on because we have offset this light. And then we want it to constrain all access and do add. And now we test. As you can see, we did it right because now this light is following that. So what we can do is we can just move this null to the field cam thingy and then we can just move this light. There we go. Amazing. Now for the color of the light, what I'm going to do is change the color and I'm actually just going to do a very cowboy thing, which is just that, <laughs> just color pick from the sky from our footage. Just because, you know, I'm fine with putting more color values into that. We also need to change the AOV light group. Um, so this would be key underscore LGT. I think in my, my Wolverine video, I named them very specific and long names because I was sending them to a compositor. So I barely talked to him, but I, and there were loads of lights, so I was calling them like sequence end left blue light, stuff like that, just so his life was easier. Anyway, we go to render full update on the scene. Oh, wait, is there exposure? Okay, intensity is one, but let's uh, press play to render. Oops. Hmm. Well, it's pretty intense. Go 22, no, 21, let's say. Let's do it before and after. See, it's picking up a bit. We don't want to go overboard because the thing is, it's good for it to be a bit light and then it could be graded down. And if you look here, we are now gathering up all these separate, um, separate elements. So when you're compositing package, what you can do is, let's say if you just turn on light groups for all the specular directs, what you can do is you can um, rebuild your renders, like with the, you know, that's why I do it just with the specular direct. And you can control the likes in compositing. So it's such a powerful thing. And if you ever work as a lighting TD in, you know, certainly in big companies, they have setups that control this as well. It's very cool. So anyway, the start, we started like this. So, you know, I turned it down because IBLs and HDRs are quite expensive. So I reduced the exposure and that's just using our reflection image, which was the background thing, um, the background that I photoshopped. And then after that, we added the ground. So we introduced the green. Then after that, we introduced the background card just to inherit a bit more color as well. Um, but rather than create one big object, it's just so I can control these separate entities because you see like how we go from nothing and then to the ground, that impacts it quite a lot. And then the back, um, and then the back card as well, because there's quite a bit of green in that. But now that that's isolated, the compositor could actually color grade just that specular direct from that background card and then going from there uh, where is it there to there let's turn this up a little bit oh wait yeah oops no yeah that's fine actually yeah that's fine 21 was fine so yeah that's that would be a good starting point as you can see, it's like, this is a raw CG render, so there's no shadows or anything. But this video is just purely looking at the lighting. Um, so I, I would say that's pretty much it. I'm not going to walk through any of the compositing or anything, but what I would say, um, what I would advise is, you know, just make sure you separate the AOV light groups and, 
you know, in the settings, just uh, turn on, I think for me, I turn on all light groups for specular direct. I know at companies like MPC, if you work as a lighting TD there, that's how you rebuild your comps for dailies. Um, but they have automatic setups which update your renders as well. But you could basically just rebuild your specular directs. The indirect, you don't necessarily need to separate, but that's just the bounce light. So you could just keep that. Um, you could separate them, but there probably won't be too much. Um, so yeah, it's just the main rays of light. And as you can see, if I go, if I scroll through here, even with the direct passes uh, layered out, the direct includes um, the color information as well. So that's why when I've worked as a lighting TD, you just use the uh, specular direct because it's primary reflections. And then you can control them. Then in Nuke, if you're using Nuke as a compositing package, you can create an expl uh, you can use the merge and then the function plus, and then use an exposure mode and set it to change in stops. And basically, every every stop you go up will be like moving an exposure up one in Maya. Anyway, I will leave it there. I hope that was of help. And yeah, if you want to download the files, there's There'll be a link um, below, or if you sign up to Patreon, you can join Discord, ask any questions, and yeah, have a great day.